Let's pick up this editing tutorial where we left off in part one. This one I want to, let's see, go right about here. There are some really exciting things coming on the internet. You can see. All right, he talks about voice over IP, which is a big thing in 2004. All you Skype users, pay attention. It was just that long ago. We hadn't even figured out how to do it yet. It's, uh, on its ear, thank you, because we can do things now with the internet. The letter L twice. That no one ever really seriously thought we could do. But there's more. Um, in another role that I. Okay, we're going to pick it up with another role. Yeah, the role we're learning. J to go backwards, space bar to play. In another role, we're learning. In. And they, in another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. I get the biggest kick out of that, the interplanetary Internet. And my sister works in physics in that area, and she said, yeah, so what's new? I said, still sounds cool to me. Okay, we're going to put this clip right down here, click that button. Even though the playhead is somewhere else, it always adds the clip to the end of the sequence. Now let's go find something else. Let's try this one right about there. Phenomenal. Effort supported in the same way as we've been able to support communications terrestrially. So it turns out, however, that the little details are different. And the thing that works terrestrially, called TCP IP, does not work very well. At the speed of light, it's 20 minutes. Time delay, it has to be changed. But we. Right there, but. Well, but. Well, but we have now a set of standards for this. We're hoping, we being JPL, are hoping to have a Mars Telecom order, Orbiter in or, orbit around Mars around 2009 to support missions for the next decade uh, on the surface of Mars and possibly going to the outer planets. Okay, the letter I to set the in, the letter O to set the out, the letter E to edit down to the timeline, up arrow to move to the other point, hold the shift key down. Listen closely because this is, this is just brilliant. For the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. But we have now a set of... Except but we, we got two problems. Number one, the but is totally out of context. We're working on interplanetary internet, but we have a problem. No, no, this, we're obviously missing a shot between those two. But there's also something else that's kind of weird that you may not have noticed. Notice the audio meters right here. Notice when I'm playing. We've been working for the last six years. How or many so audio meters do you see glowing? Right, six of them because we're in surround mode. So let's switch back to the project library, because I don't want to edit this in surround. I want to edit this in stereo. So I switch back to the project library, select the project file, click the info icon, and click the wrench. This is where you set project properties. And notice that the audio channels are set to surround. I don't want them set to surround. I want them set to stereo. So I set that to stereo, click OK and hide the infographic. Now when I double click the project to load it into the timeline, but we have now we're back to two meters, except they're awfully small. Wouldn't it be nice if we had bigger audio meters? Well we can, right up here. Window, show audio meters, keyboard shortcut shift, command eight. And now finally big audio meters on the design of an interplanetary extension of the internet. But we have now a very cool. All right, so we have a problem with the butt. And that's right over here. Let's see if we can find this. With the 700 or 800 million devices that are already on the internet today. But what we'd like to do is over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. I mean, it's, it's at the speed of light. Okay, that's the end of it. So let's set an out. To make the space exploration effort supported in the same way as we've been able to support communications terrestrially. So it turns out, however, that the little details are different, and the thing that works... That's it right there. ...your wing if and the interfaces are different, and the thing that works terrestrially, called TCP IP, does not work very well over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. Okay. So, to be quite truthful, I did listen to this beforehand, so... Uh, but I listened to it the same way. I just played the clip and decided what edits I want to make. Except I want to insert this selected area between these two clips. I can't use this because that's going to append it to the end of the sequence. That doesn't make any sense. 
I still haven't figured out what a connected clip is, so we'll talk about that in a minute. The only choice is this. Watch the timeline in two, one, woof. Keyboard shortcut is the letter W. Notice the letter E and the W and the Q are all next to each other on the keyboard. That is not coincidental. E does an append edit. W does an insert edit. And Q does a connect edit. Let's back this up. Shift question mark. For the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. And the thing that works terrestrially called and the thing that works terrestrially called TCP IP does not work very well over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. But we have now a set of standards. And now that whole thing makes sense because the butt flows smoothly. All right. Let's hide our audio panel here for a minute. Don't have to, I'm just doing it to show off. Hide audio meters. And now I want to add some B-roll. First B-roll I want to add is right at this shot change. Again, I'm using the up and down arrow keys. And let's go back to Vint Surf, but now we're going to look at all of our clips. And one of the shots I want to use is right near the top in this event, which is the Earth in space. And it just so happens that this shot starts here and goes for, oh, about 10 seconds. So I'm going to create a 10-second clip here. Now, I could drag this, and notice as you drag it, it shows what the duration is. But wouldn't it be cool if we had a keyboard way of doing it? And the answer is we do. Control-D. Control-D, as in David, sets the duration. Notice it lights up right here in the timeline window, and I need a 10-second clip. So I type 1000, enter. And it's now set the duration for 10 seconds. I don't want this clip to edit into the timeline. I want it attached to the timeline. I want it to go right in at that in. And what Apple does is they call that a connected edit. It's connected to the timeline. So I'm going to click here, and it automatically adds the clip on the track above it. And if I were to move this clip, notice the connected clip moves with it. We're going to do a lot of that in the organization phase, but I'm just showing you the significance of a connected clip is that it moves wherever you drag it. Let's just drop it back again. It's not quite where we want. Command plus to zoom in. Command plus, and we'll pull that over right about there. And we say, okay, that's where I want the shot to end. Let's just listen to it. We've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. Let's do a cut at interplanetary. The last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. And the thing that works terrestrially... Okay, so we're going to do the thing that works. And the thing that works... Right there. And we'll just grab this and drag it over. I didn't have to move the playhead. The reason I did is just to show you where I wanted to do the edit. Again, we're spending an entire chapter talking about trimming. There's lots of trimming control, but for right now, we're just going to trim by dragging the end of a clip. And we're not going to get too obsessed about it, because right now the goal is to build the sequence, then you trim. I want to add a still image now. Well, I've got a couple to pick from, but let's go over to here. See this camera icon? That opens up the Photos Library. And I've got a bunch of NASA pictures here. The nice thing about this is that these pictures are available to me regardless of what project I'm in. The events can be closed. I still have access to the photos because this is always available across all projects and all events. Let's find the shot of the NASA launch. Now I'm going to grab this clip and drag it out. So we can absolutely drag. And the thing that works terrestrially, called TCP IP, does not work very well over interplanetary distances. All right, we'll just leave that shot as is. Let's try adding another picture out of the photo browser. This time I'll select the picture. I could type this, or I could type the letter Q. And notice that because the photo browser was selected, the letter Q dropped it to a higher track. If I was up here in the event browser, it would edit down from the event browser. So now when we play this back... And the thing that works terrestrially, called TCP IP, does not work very well over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. But we have now a... Let's add one more. Hit the down arrow key, and we'll go to a shot of Mars right there. And again, the letter Q we have now a set of standards for this. We're hoping, we being JPL, are hoping... Oop, 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 that's NASA stars. I don't want that. I want to do the Mars. There we go. Drag it in place. 
so busy watching I wasn't paying attention. We have now a set of standards for this. We're hoping, we being JPL, are hoping... Okay, several things. One, if you did something wrong, you hit the delete key, it's wrong. And if I edit something at the wrong place, as I did, letter Q, simply grab it, drag it where you want it to go. And if you need to change the length... Mars Telecom orbiter, orbiter in or, orbit around Mars. And we'll just bring it there. As long as you've got handles, which is extra video after the out or before the in, you can drag it as much as you want. Shift Z so we can see what we've got. Click the camera icon to make the photo browser disappear. And we've got it done. Vision. In another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. And the thing that works terrestrially called TCP IP. Except there's a little bit of a glitch here. Notice I got some garbage on either side of the image. Let's select that. Go to the inspector. Go to the video section. And scroll down really buried, but it's called the spatial conform. It says, do you want this to fit in the window or do I want to fill it? Well, in this case, I'm off by a couple pixels, so stretching it won't make that much of a difference. I'm going to fill it. Select this, scroll down, spatial conform, fill, go here, scroll down, spatial conform, fill, and now clean shots. And the thing that works terrestrially called TCP IP does not work very well over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. But we have now a set of standards for this. We're hoping, we being JPL, are hoping to have a Mars Telecom order, Orbiter in or, orbit around Mars around 2009 to support... Cool. All right. Now, there's things that I would do, it, and we will do in future chapters. I'll show you how to add transitions to do a, a dissolve in and a dissolve out. We'll be spending an entire chapter talking about trimming. But think about what we've accomplished. We've been able to go up to the event browser and look at any arbitrary collection of clips, taking advantage of how we're able to use keywords and ratings... We find the beginning of the clip, the letter I. We find the end of the clip we want to play back, the letter O. Then we can edit it by appending it to the end of the sequence or inserting it into the middle of the sequence or connecting it, which puts it on a higher track above the sequence to give us B-roll. We can also connect for audio and give us sound effects, and we'll be talking about that in the audio section of this training. There's a lot more to discover about editing, but if you only watch this, you're already going to be ahead of the game because Final Cut gives you the control that you need over the clips that you're editing. Editing is the process of combining audio, video, and stills to tell a story. There's a wide variety of ways we can view, select, and edit our clips to create our timeline. Final Cut provides both mouse moves and keyboard shortcuts, and multi-touch gestures are also supported. And we'll be spending the rest of this chapter showing you many different ways that we can create edits. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.